Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Change Your Mind podcast. I'm your host, Chris Ashley, where we explore the intersection between personal development, spirituality, and science. And I'm really excited for my guest today. I we, we, we worked really hard to get her on the schedule, so I'm so excited to share. It's all about chronic pain. Um, but first, a few quick announcements. Head over to my website, chrisashley.net. All the links are in the show notes too. You can find information about my courses, free uh, workshops I give online, my book, Change Your Mind to Change Your Reality, and connect with me. I'm at Change Your Mind with Chris all over social media. Hi, I'm Chris. When I was younger, I went through trauma that caused me to feel broken and lost. But my life changed after I had a spiritual awakening. Since then, I've dedicated my life to studying and learning from masters all around the world that have helped me to create a life of fulfillment and abundance beyond my wildest dreams. Now I'm dedicated to sharing everything I've learned so that you don't have to suffer for decades like I did. I've seen people's lives completely transform, and I share it all right here. Now, I am so excited. I have with me today Petra Brunbauer. And Petra is a wellness coach, a podcast host, and the creator of the Journey well, uh, Wellbeing Program. So in 2019, she, just, she created the Journey Wellbeing Program after a transformative personal experience inspired her to continue her own journey of healing, self-discovery, and personal development in psychology and mental health. The Journey offers a comprehensive online coaching program podcast, blog, virtual summits, and many resources to support individuals in their journey to become uh, to better mental, physical, and emotional well-being. As the host of the Journey podcast and writer of the Journey blog, Petra shares her insights on holistic healing and mental health. Petra is also the host of the Virtual Holistic Wellbeing Summit with over 40 expert speakers. And I know you're in grad school right now, so you are one busy lady. I'm so honored that you made time. Welcome, Petra. Thank you so much. <laughs> While I'm listening to you talk about the introduction, I'm just kind of thinking, yeah, it's been a really busy year. <laughs> so, but I've enjoyed it all. So definitely no complaints. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I, I cut out some parts, but you, you moved to France from Canada. And yeah, you're just your story is awesome. Um, and I'm really excited to talk about chronic pain. It's something that hits home. Uh, my listeners know my mother has lived with chronic pain for a very long time. And I've done some research to try to help her. I found Johnny Sarnos and some others, but you are just a wealth of knowledge and I cannot wait to get into this conversation. But I want to start off, I read in your bio about a personal transformation that led to all of this. And I love hearing people's origin stories. So please share with us, what was your transformative personal experience? Yeah, absolutely. I think for most of us who end up in sort of a coaching or healing practitioner profession, there's always something that brings us to why we end up doing what we're doing. And it was the same for me. Um, I It started actually when I was a teenager, I had a lot of mental health struggles and just couldn't really find my place. I moved from Germany to Canada. <laughs> that was the first move when I was a teenager. So that caused a bit of a identity problems and just kind of losing my whole world that I had known, my friends, my family, because we we just moved into the middle of nowhere. So it started at that age, just with a lot of issues that I just didn't know where I belonged. And I I worked on that for a very long time. But my 20s, my 30s, I kept looking for ways to feel happier, feel better. And my husband and I decided to move to France in 2017. So back across the Atlantic. And in 2018, I had quite the horrible year. Um, several people in my family passed away. Um, also, shortly before or after that, my best friend died of a heart attack in his late 30s. One of my friends passed away from breast cancer. And at the end of 2018, I was so drained and I remember just sitting in bed one night and I was crying and I'm like, I don't know who I am. I don't know where I belong. I I just don't even know what's going on anymore. And I had such a tough year for, and I couldn't even put my finger on it other than knowing that I felt so disconnected and so much pain and confusion. And uh, And I said to my husband, I don't really know how to fix this. I don't even know where to start with all of this. 
But I think that many people feel like that. And I should find something that helps people. (laughs) So that very simple thing at the end of 2018 was what eventually led me to creating the journey and creating the journey podcast and certifying in a lot of different holistic modalities because I thought that I couldn't be the only person who was experiencing these kind of feelings on the planet. There had to be other people. And so I I wanted to create something that could help people. That was the first step to it. And in uh, 2020, I, I fell off a chair. So this was really nothing exciting. I fell off a chair and I broke my foot and I ended up in a cast and was told After six weeks, the cast would come off and I could drive again. Everything was fine. It was not a complicated break. I didn't need surgery or anything. So I was in a cast over Christmas, which really sucked. But between Christmas and New Year, they they took the cast off and I couldn't walk. So they told me to come back, you know, three weeks later, they would reassess. Uh, They did an x-ray. Everything looked fine. The bone had healed. Everything was good. But the swelling didn't come down and and I just couldn't walk. Every time I put my foot on the ground, I had excruciating pain. It was like flames shooting up my leg and everything was burning and I just, I couldn't walk. So I came back a few weeks later, they x-rayed, they couldn't find anything. They said, you know, we, we need to start you on physiotherapy. So I started that. I went for about three months <laughs> to March And I still couldn't walk. I was in a wheelchair by then because I just simply couldn't get around the house and trying to do chores and crutches at the same time was was really complicated. So yeah, they had um, sent me a wheelchair and I had physio two to three times a week, but the pain just didn't go away. And I used a wheelchair for about six months, which gave me a whole new understanding and appreciation of all of the challenges around when your mobility is impaired and you, um, I I couldn't even go up the stairs to, to use the bathroom or I couldn't even stand in the shower. Like there were so many difficult things that happened because of that. I couldn't drive myself anymore. I kind of lost my independence because I couldn't just get in the car and go grocery shopping. So it was a very difficult time for me to think that in my late 30s, that that's what it would be like from now on. I couldn't do any sports or exercising. Uh, There's a lot of castles here in France. And I love exploring castles, but that just it wasn't possible. I couldn't put the foot into a shoe. And at the end of the six months, we, we got to a point where I could finally crutch around a little bit more. And I could put one of those surgery boots on my foot. So at least I could um, have a a sole that I could kind of hobble around on for going out. But the pain continued for, uh, for three, three years. Well, now it's three years, almost three years when I, when I broke my foot. So, um, and it it kind of started spreading uh, (laughs) my leg and eventually they, they diagnosed me with complex regional pain syndrome and um, the the answer was to just put lidocaine patches on it every night, and and that was it. <laughs> so it was not very helpful, and that kicked off a journey of needing to find something that could help with this pain that could get me back to being active. I, I gained a lot of weight because I simply couldn't move very well, and that yeah, that really that was the second transformative piece that really kicked off my interest in chronic pain and anything related to that and things that could help. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing those stories. And, you know, I I think the first story is so many people can relate to, right? Because unfortunately we all go through loss. That's part of this, this human experience and to lose friends at such a young age is like extra devastating. Absolutely. And to have it happen all at once. It kind of seems like it happens like that sometimes, right? Like when it rains, it pours. It's like a dark night of the soul. Um, I had a similar thing where last year my my dog passed away and then my dad passed away and like he was my best friend and it was just all like a long hospice journey. So <laughs> I was like tearing up as you were talking because I was like, oh, everything you're describing, I know that pain. 
But I think it is so powerful and so beautiful that at the end of that, even though you were emotionally drained and had been through so much, and I can't even imagine like multiple, multiple people um, that you lost out of your own pain, you wanted to help others who are suffering. And that's, that's so powerful because it's so easy to just go the other way, right? It's so easy to just fall into that state of despair and it's hard to come out of it. You like, you really do lose your sense of identity when the real world comes crashing down around you like that. So I just want to just highlight how beautiful and powerful that is, that that's the realization you came to that you want to help others. And then for the, for the pain story, it's crazy. I feel like I've heard so many people have these similar reports that, you know, Western medicine is great if you break your arm or you're in a car accident, but it seems like they don't really know, you know, how to help people, especially when it comes to chronic pain. Like you said, like lidocaine patches are not the answer and it's been three years. So, so what did you end up finding and how are you doing today? Yeah, so my search continued and I came to the realization through various, I mean, there are so many books available and therapies available, but at at some point I came to the realization that there is a mind-body component to pain, at least for myself. And I don't know if that's true for everyone, but at least for myself, that is something that I discovered. So uh, the way that I took care of myself played into the pain. So not being able to exercise didn't help. I needed so much more rest. Uh, Rest was one of those things that I was such a a busy person all the time. Like my calendar was always full. I'm always go, go, go. And after that happened, my body wouldn't function the same way anymore. And pain is really hard to modulate throughout the day. So if you're constantly busy throughout the day, managing your pain, it actually drains a lot of your energy. So part of what I came to realize is that I have to set very clear boundaries and how I take care of myself and be really honest when things become too much. Even if other people think, oh, well, you've just had a day off. How can you not be ready to do something? But they don't realize that a lot of the time with chronic pain, you actually spent the entire day fighting that pain just to get through the day, which is really exhausting at the end of the day. So there was there were some of the self-care pieces that I began to understand through the mind-body connection. And the other piece that I realized pretty early on too is there's an emotional component to chronic pain, at least for myself. And that includes stress or any kind of emotions that affect you negatively. And so working on being able to better process emotions when they come up for me and also lowering stress levels has been huge. When I have a lot of stress, there is days where I just can't even put my feet on the ground in the morning because there's pain right away. So stress is a huge thing when it comes to chronic pain for myself. And so the the thing that I found actually was the most interesting. And when we talked before, that's something definitely stay tuned on that one because I'm still working on it. But I discovered Dr. Bradley Nelson and it was really through a fluke that one of the people that I have gotten to know through the podcast mentioned him to me and I started looking into his books and what he offers. So He has written The Emotion Code and then also a follow-up book called The Body Code. And you can certify in those modalities. And there are many practitioners that offer his uh, way of of working, not just with chronic pain, but really with, with anything. And the idea behind it is that most of the things that make us ill or uncomfortable or put us not at ease are caused by trapped emotions. Mm. emotional and traumatic events that happen in our lives that somehow become stuck in our body they just didn't process and leave for whatever reason they stuck around in our bodies and then begin causing problems and those can be mental emotional problems they can be physical problems really trapped emotions can be involved from what I understand in many many different things and so this was 
my first aha moment <laughs> when I was reading about the emotion code. And I thought to myself, yeah, if you think back to all of the things that happened in the past few years and even decades back of emotional and traumatic events, this makes so much sense on, on why I'm feeling this pain and why it's not moving on because I haven't processed or released any of these emotions. And sure, I worked with yoga, I worked with meditation, I worked a lot on stress reduction, but nothing specifically on releasing trapped emotions in that sense. So so that's been, I think, sort of the the biggest and most impactful discovery that I've had in the last three years is working with with the emotion code and learning about that at this point. I'm so glad you brought this up because it's something I write about in my book that I mean, I haven't studied nearly to the extent that you have, but, you know, pain and illness can be messages from our body, right? That something is out of alignment, that we're not following the path we're meant to, that we haven't processed something. And so much of it comes from repressed emotions. And there's, you know, I mentioned Johnny Sarnos earlier, he says a very similar thing. He he focuses mostly on rage, like unexpressed rage. Hmm. But I, I've noticed that in my own life, too, I had chronic headaches for so long. And then I finally realized they were from stress. And from like everything else in my body tensing up, and it just happened to present that way. Because it's because the other thing that's fascinating is pain doesn't originate in the body part that you feel it, right? It's in your brain and nervous system, which is just like such a mind trip. Okay, so I have not read the emotion code or the body code. So I'd love for you to tell us a little bit more about what they are and, and what you're learning. And I know you told me before that you're not allowed to teach any of it. So tell us as much as you're allowed to, because I think sometimes just hearing that this is a possibility can help so many people, right? Just having that realization. And you know, the amazing thing about it is that any of the listeners can just go and purchase the book or the audio book and they can apply this themselves right away when they're reading the book. So they actually don't need to do a certification course if they don't want to. They don't have to do anything. They can just get the book, read it and do it for themselves. So I love that. It's simple. It's very easy to read and understand. And so any of the listeners, if this is something they might want to try, just go out, download the Audible or buy the book off of Amazon, read it and, and just do it. Try it on yourself and, and see what happens. You know, that's how simple it is. So it is based on, on the assumption that because as human beings, we are all energetic beings. We're all made up of energy we have vibrations, we have frequency, and all of the emotions vibrate at certain frequencies as well. And so the emotion code specifically goes on the premise that when these events happen, where we're vibrating at these very low frequencies, such as, as pain and anger, shame, guilt, like those vibrate at very low frequencies, that that actually in these events can cause our organs to take on those frequencies and then they can turn into thoughts and they can then affect our behaviors and so that kind of turns into that whole cycle of um, emotions actually affecting every bit of our body through frequency and through vibration and so like I said before when we have these events and sometimes we have traumatic events and our body just processes them. We're able to go through, let them go. We're able to maybe get some exercise, shake it off, you know, and move on. But very often these emotional events will actually stay in our bodies. They become stuck in there and they become stuck in the cells of our body. And then they begin causing problems. And so the emotion code then goes on the premise that we can, through muscle testing, so through speaking with our subconscious mind, that we can discover whether or not we have these trapped emotions, where they are in our body, and what, what those emotions are so that they can be released. And this, again, goes on the premise that the subconscious mind really is aware of anything and everything that has happened through our lifetime, that the subconscious mind really 
it knows every traumatic event we've had. It knows every emotion we have felt. It knows which emotions were related to which event, uh, which memories are related to that. And that we can use the subconscious as sort of this really vast resource to discover where our trapped emotions are and then bring them to the awareness of our conscious mind and through that release them. So it's it's a very simple procedure if you if you think about it it's a very simple approach but it's so profound and the results of that speaking to other people who work with the emotion code and the body code have been life-changing for many people you know it it so i had so many thoughts come up as you were talking the first is when you mentioned their association their association with organs, different emotions, that made me think Chinese medicine immediately, right? Like anger in Chinese medicine is associated with like the liver and gallbladder, grief with the lungs. And then I also started thinking about David Hawkins. I don't know if you've read his book, Letting Go, The Pathway of Surrender, but he he also characterizes uh, emotions on different uh, frequencies and he actually numbers them. It's like, Mm -hmm. I don't know, like I'm totally like making up the numbers, but it's like anger is negative 500 joy is positive 200,000, like whatever it is. And his whole thing is it's really similar. He's like, you have to release your repressed emotions. And I love that book, but I, I left being like, how, you know, like, Mm -hmm. how do we do this? And I'm going to ask you that in a second, but I have to say it is so cool that in the emotion code, the author gives you a way to test if you even have repressed emotions and where they're located. Like that's, that's like groundbreaking. And my mind is blown hearing that. And muscle testing is such an easy thing to do. And I'm sure he explains a certain way to do it. I've done it with a chiropractor before, but for listeners who don't know what muscle testing is, can you just give a quick explanation of what that is and how it works? Mm -hmm. So The way that it's explained by Dr. Bradley Nelson is that your body or your subconscious can speak through the body. You can ask it questions and it always innately knows the answer. And so muscle testing can be used to ask certain questions and the subconscious will indicate with certain movements and there's different ways to muscle test. So Uh, One of them is the sway test where you sway forward for yes, sway backwards for no. And and you can read this up in the book for the instructions and why and how this works. But it's basically tapping into the subconscious, having it speak through certain movements of your muscles or your body to indicate a yes or no response to what you're asking. So if you're asking your subconscious, for example, do I have a trapped emotion, then you can use the muscle tests to find out yes or no from a very kind of intuitive place in your body. So without having to consciously go back through the last 30, 40 years that you've been alive trying to figure this out, but you can go directly to the subconscious and let it indicate what the answer to that is. And you can muscle test it different ways. There's tests that you can do for yourself. There's ways that you can test when you're working with other people. So there's different kind of ways. And I'm sure that if people aren't able to do, for example, the sway test, I mean, if you have mobility issues, it might be difficult to stand up, for example. There's many different ways that you can muscle test. So out of all of those, I'm sure that listeners will find one way that works for them. And I know that some people use a pendulum too, right? Like um, to kind of indicate a yes or no. It's all about connecting to the subconscious and just letting it give you that answer to the question that you're asking. And again, this is not really a new or revolutionary idea because even in hypnotherapy, we we use those kind of techniques and in in different other approaches, they use muscle testing and, and homeopathy. I think we use muscle testing as well. So it's it's not a a new thing, but in the way that it's being used to discover these trapped emotions, I think it's quite revolutionary. And I asked Dr. Bradley that on the podcast, I'm like, why is this not more widely known? <laughs> this is such an amazing approach. Why, why isn't everyone talking about this? Yeah. 
I I'm so excited about it. I like I'm like over here geeking out and I'm like as soon as we're over, I'm gonna buy these books because <laughs> yeah. it like okay, so I am someone who has tried like so many healing modalities, you know, and I'm sure you have too. Like and there's so many that are like release your trapped emotions, right? And there's so many, I, I don't know, I'm thinking of like EMDR or hypnosis or meditation, where it's like you're you're actively trying to go figure out what emotions are trapped and what memories led to the trapping and like what you were feeling at that time. And you know what I mean? It's like you're like digging for the answers, but this is just like you said, it's like revolutionary like the way that it's being used where you can actually just ask your subconscious and get a straight up yes or no. And then it's like, it's like, I feel like people could bypass years of therapy and like, I love therapy. Like everyone should go to therapy, but like, that's amazing. I, I like, I just think this is the coolest thing ever. And I can't believe that I didn't know about it. And I'm so excited you're telling me about it. I know. Um, and I didn't know about it either. So I was very grateful to my friend who told me about that because I still probably wouldn't know about it. And I was just wondering why people aren't talking about this more. But I mean, there's also a change that is needed in the medical system in general that we need to integrate more with holistic approaches. We need to integrate more with sort of a whole body approach. And I think what Dr. Nelson is offering could be part of, of that change, you know, it could be part of just looking at healing in a very different way, but it'll take time, you know, it'll take time to become mainstream. Yeah, I mean, and I don't want to get too deep into, you know, it's not a conspiracy theory, but too deep into it. But, you know, unfortunately, pharmaceutical industries rule medical, and they're the ones helping train all these doctors. And so many doctors just don't know right? They're just not being taught about this kind of stuff in medical school. And most of them are so busy that they're not going out and doing this kind of research themselves. Um, okay, so so we know that repressed emotions can cause pain. We know how to figure out if you have those repressed emotions using the muscle testing. So then how do we release them once we once we have that confirmation that we have them? Yeah, so it's related, I believe, to, you know, the because your body is, is a magnetic field. <laughs> so it's all to do with the energy and the frequencies in your body, really. It, it has a magnetic field, which now has been proven by science. Also, we can measure those things now, uh, whereas we used to just kind of think that was there, but now we know it is. So the way that emotions can get released, at least the first way that, that I read about in the book and, and the training that I started... You can use a magnet to do that. And you can also use your hands because your hands have electromagnetic fields as well. It's kind of the same idea when we do Reiki, for example, we're using the hands to move or change the energy. Or when we're uh, doing tapping, like EFT tapping, for example, we're using our hands to kind of move energy. And it, it works the same way in that idea. So I have read both about using magnets. I've read about just people using their hands to help with that, to move the energy. So there's there's different approaches, but none of them are outlandish or expensive. <laughs> so you can definitely, if you have a fridge magnet, <laughs> that'll do. You can try it. So it's it's really straightforward if you wanted to try that on yourself. Okay, so how would you use a magnet? Is this one of the things you're allowed to talk about? I I think listeners should probably read in the book for the exact way. Um, but you're using a magnet to just affect the the field, the electromagnetic field, right? So you're just moving it in a certain way, in a certain direction. So if they if they look in the book and and there's charts in the book also that will help you determine you know which emotion it is that is trapped and so that you can work more precisely with that but again you don't have to have any special skills you don't need to be trained in any specific things you don't have to be a yoga instructor or anything you can just pick up a fridge magnet that you have at home and you can do this on yourself <laughs> you can test it out and see how it works for you <laughs> 
That's so amazing. I can't wait to read this book. And you were when you first said magnet, I was thinking of like, you know, in the like cartoons, like I think like Tom and Jerry, they had the like huge like horseshoe shaped magnets. And I'm like thinking <laughs> yeah. this powerful thing. And you're like, oh, just a fridge magnet. That's pretty amazing. And it, it's, you know, I love backing things up with science. And just the fact that we are manipulating this electromagnetic field is is just so amazing you know it's and the fact that we can measure it like I keep saying this but I feel like we are living in the most exciting time ever to be alive when science is backing up all of this holistic practices and spirituality and you know things that ancient cultures have been saying forever it's just so so cool and so exciting it's not woo woo anymore right it's not taboo it's it's science backed Um, which brings me to heart math. You know, I know you uh, know quite a bit about heart math and that's all about, you know, measuring the the field around your heart, right? So can you talk to us a little bit about heart math? Yeah, heart math was another really interesting discovery. I did just a very basic training with them. The summer was eight weeks in length and I learned about the heart brain coherence and how that affects us and and why we should be in heart brain coherence <laughs> throughout the day because i guess that's a bigger question like why should we even do that and again it has to do with just optimizing how you live throughout your day throughout your life because when the heart and the brain are in coherence and they can measure this. I mean, if you were to hook up a bunch of electrodes, you can measure brain waves and you can do the same for your heart. You can measure the electrical impulses. And so when we achieve coherence so that the brain waves get very similar to the heart waves, we are aligned, so to speak. Our minds and our bodies are then living in alignment and very simply put this this helps boost our immunity it helps us focus better it helps us stay in a place where we're not expanding energy throughout the day on negative feelings negative emotions always feeling like we're fighting upstream we are in essence entering a a sort of flow state with the heart brain coherence and heart math has done so much research on that and you can definitely read up many many studies that they have done and and how they're proving that this exactly works but the basis of it all is that you want to learn how to achieve that heart brain coherence throughout the day so that when you have experiences through the day that really rattle you or they make you angry or they put you in a place where you're just feeling misaligned you've lost that center then you have techniques that you can put yourself back into that flow state, into that alignment. And that uh, they have proven all sorts of impacts on health and mental health, physical health. So there definitely is a, a large body of science to actually talk about why we should be doing this for our health and how that helps us. So especially when it comes to chronic pain, heart math offered techniques where I could and I had a lot of pain throughout the day I could use the breathing techniques and I could use their techniques to to just realign myself and manage that pain a lot better I wasn't coming so much then from a reactive space where I'm reacting to the pain but I was putting myself into a state throughout the day that helped me manage it a lot better and and stay in a much more aligned space so I think heart math can be everybody should be doing our math <laughs> but it's one of those things that it's it's so simple you know you use some breathing techniques and you use the coherence approaches but it has such a profound effect on your health and on your life and I don't know why more people aren't doing it <laughs> so totally and it it only takes like a few minutes to get into coherence right yeah that's really cool that uh they have stuff specifically for chronic pain like I've I've used heart math. I have on my shelf their little thing that clips onto your ear and then it like yes. attaches to your, your phone. And um, I've done that and it's cool. It's like you you watch this mandala and you breathe with it and then it like shows you when you're in coherence. And it's it was like a couple hundred bucks, but there's like a app that goes with it. Mm-hmm. And then I've been in workshops um, with like Greg Braden where he walks you through certain heart math stuff. And when he does it, he has you actually talk to your heart. 
and you mm-hmm. get these like instant answers and that are like so powerful and I've, I've used it in like those kind of ways and I've seen like Joe Dispenza's stuff I know he does a lot with them but I've I haven't heard about it for chronic pain which makes total sense right it's everything we were saying because like stress um can create so much pain and it can worsen everything mm-hmm. that you have so it's really really powerful uh heart math is so so cool mm-hmm. um I love I remember I think they said that they measured like an eight foot field from your heart to correct me if it's the wrong number. And they were like, and by the way, that's just as far as their measuring tools went. Like it's, it's probably so much bigger. Um, so, so. Cool. And, and I think that's, that's why a lot of people get affected by other people, right? Because so when you are walking into a room and there's somebody who maybe just had a really bad day or they're very angry because that field extends out really far you actually cross into that field of many other people whenever you're in a crowd or when you're walking. So it also gives you techniques and skills to kind of, um, you know, protect your own energy so that you're not picking up all of the stuff from everyone else around you because it's not always positive when you go out and you meet with other people. So I think that's also, if you do have chronic pain, one of those things is really self-regulation also and that's a very very great technique for helping with your own protecting your own energy (laughs) throughout the day as well so important I love that you said that and we I feel like in a lot of new age conversations or spiritual conversations or even just like memes on Instagram people are like okay especially for empaths protect your own energy but that's such a out there in the clouds kind of statement, but you just brought it back to earth and science backed. So I think that's really cool. And it again, makes me think of like Joe Dispenza workshops where everyone is doing these meditations together and then their, their fields are all crossing and it's like magnifying. So it's like, if everyone's aligned and it makes me think of the square root of square root of 1% where all these meditators went to DC and, um, I think it was like the nineties where it was like the crime capital of the world and they meditated on peace and it lowered Mm -hmm. all the violent crimes. Like it's amazing what we can do as a collective when we get together. Right. But I love that you said protect your own energy too. Okay. So you also mentioned another way to release repressed emotions is tapping. And I haven't had anyone on the show talk about tapping yet. So if you could explain to listeners, what is tapping and how does it work? Yeah, for sure. So the emotional freedom techniques or EFT as are known uh, tapping, you literally are tapping on your body. <laughs> so it was developed, I think, in the 1990s by Gary Craig. And he actually built on a lot of the earlier work um, from Dr. Roger Callahan. He created the thought field therapy, which is kind of the foundation for EFT tapping. And The premise, I think, for Dr. Callahan was that he was integrating Chinese medicine principles with psychology. So using the energy points that Chinese medicine has known about for thousands of years and that they're using with acupuncture, acupressure, those points, using them and integrating them in his practices to help release energy, to help move energy And not all tapping releases things, but sometimes it can move energy that's stagnant or it can move energy forward that was running backwards or energy backwards that was running forward. So optimizing the energy flow in your body so that you can heal from whatever it is that you're seeking healing from. And I found EFT, again, really simple to do because you you learn the tapping points and then you can do that anytime in your home or wherever you are so you don't need to have any big machinery or specialized equipment or anything to do that and you can also if you want to work with a practitioner they could just make you a video that you use or write out you know some points for you but you can do all of this yourself and that's how I started off as well I just went on YouTube and I looked it up and I started using it for myself before certifying as a practitioner later on. But that's how simple some of these approaches are. And yet they are so life-changing and so profound and have really, really great results. And EFT is another one of those approaches that is science-backed. 
and they have done many, many studies. I think that EFT International um, with Dr. Dawson Church, I think they did many studies over the years and they work with the VA, I think, for um, releasing PTSD um, in, in military personnel. So they've had really great success with many different illnesses or complaints that people have had and challenges they've dealt with. So the EFT, again, is another science-backed method. And I like science-backed. <laughs> so I like yeah. seeing the science on those things. But yeah, really simple to use. And you learn how to just use phrases and tap on points at the same time. And through that, you're managing, you can manage chronic pain, you can release things. For a lot of people, tapping is very quick. So you do a session, you come in, maybe the pain is about a seven or eight out of 10. You do a session, maybe it goes down to three or four, you do another round, and then it's zero or one. So wow. I found that tapping is also it works for, for myself, at least it works very quickly. So I don't need 20 sessions to, to fix something. It works fairly quickly for myself. So that's amazing. It, I mean, it's incredible that there's something out there that's science backed that you can do on your own. That doesn't cost you any money. That doesn't take a long time. And the mainstream medical world doesn't even know about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so before we pressed record, you offered to walk listeners through a little tapping session. So yeah. I I would love it if you could do that. I'm I'm excited to try it myself. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we can do sort of the the short version of it, and um, listeners can also look online and they can learn more expanded versions of it or more specific to whatever it is that they want to address. But the very basic premise of it is that you're going to be tapping on different points on the body. And the first point that we start off is actually here on the side of the hand. Okay. And it's just in that fleshy bit where when you're kind of going along, there's a fleshy part right here. And when you're tapping, you can use two fingers or four fingers, or you can kind of make like a point and tap. It's whatever feels best for you. And it's the same with the tapping strength. Tap sort of whatever feels good for you. I mean, you don't want to be causing bruises and just hammering on the skin. But <laughs> but if you're just stroking it very gently, it might not move the energy enough. So, so tap it in a way that feels comfortable and good for yourself so that you're not injuring yourself, but you can feel that you're affecting the energy in your body. And so when we start off tapping, we usually make a sentence that kind of guides the tapping session. And so if you're using chronic pain, for example, I don't even really need to know what that person's specific chronic pain is or what their specific trauma is or their specific illness or injury. The neat thing about tapping is that, again, it works with the subconscious mind. So when you give it that prompt, the subconscious mind knows exactly what it is that you're trying to do. So it will work on that. So when we say today, for example, we can just say this problem or we can say this pain and listeners can substitute what it is exactly for them that they'd like to work on. So my foot pain or my arm pain, my leg pain or my sadness, my depression, my anxiety, you can just insert whatever it is that you're working on. So we usually start off here on this point and we'll just start tapping on the side of the hand. Does it matter which hand we start with? Nope. And you can do this left side, right side. When we come to the points on the face, you can do it on one side. You can do it on both sides, whatever feels good for you. It will work either way. So even if you have a mobility challenge, you can only use one hand. That's totally fine. It'll still work. So, yeah. And then so we usually we start off, we, we make a sentence. Yeah, <laughs> so I was going to say, how do we do the sentence? Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be... Even though I have this pain, and again, you insert, you know, what it is that you have, even though I have this pain. We say it out louder in our head. You can say it in your head when you're doing it yourself. When I'm working with someone, I will say it and then they usually will repeat it. Okay. Um, so I, I give them little chunks to repeat while we're going. But if you're doing this at home, you can say it out loud. You can say it in your head, whatever works for you. Okay. 
So I can break it down into junks. And for this, it would be, even though I have this pain, even though I, I, have pain. <laughs> I completely love and accept myself. Completely love and accept myself. And now if you don't believe that, if you don't love and accept yourself, then you can also say, and I accept that, or I am okay, or I'm open to discovering, or I'm open to releasing this. So if you feel like you don't love and accept yourself, then you can change that as well. So we say that sentence three times. So even though I have this pain, even though I have this pain, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I have this pain, even though I have this pain, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. So from here, we're going to go to the inside of the eyebrow. And you can do this both side, one side, one finger, two fingers, however you want to do that. The important thing is that you're just tapping on this energy. And as we're tapping here, we're just going to repeat the major part of the sentence we constructed, which is this pain, because we are wanting to resolve the pain. So we just say this pain, this pain. And we tap about five to seven times, and then we'll go to the outside of the eyebrow, just at the end of the eye here. We'll tap there and we'll repeat the same thing. We'll say this pain, this pain. And then we'll go under the eye. We'll tap here and we'll say this pain. This pain. And where? what are these points correlated to? These correlate to Chinese medicine points. So the one that you're tapping on right now is, a, I think it's the stomach point. Um, there's also a kidney point down here by the collar point, um, bone. There's a spleen point on the side, which we'll tap later. So they correlate to different energy meridians in your body sometimes they're along the meridian sometimes they're the beginning or end points of those meridians and so you can get into more of the chinese medicine part if you want to know more about the points but basically that's what they correlate with when you're tapping them their their energy meridian points yeah and then you tap under just under the nose here where that little divot is above your lip you might have to stretch a little bit <laughs> And you tap there and you say this pain. This pain. And then we'll go just here on the divot between the lip and the chin. And tap here and say this pain. This pain. And then we'll go down to the, where the collarbone comes together. There are sort of these two soft spots on either side. They might be a little bit sore but they're like these soft divots so when you follow the collarbone right to down here and then you go about an inch below that you'll feel there's these two oh, yeah. divots <laughs> that you come into and so we're going to tap right on there. those <laughs> yeah, they're, they're also called the sore spots <laughs> so yeah. they usually are <laughs> sore on people <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you could tap those and you say this pain this pain you can also massage those if it feels better to not thump on them, but to just rub them, you can also do that. And then we're going to go under the arm and we're coming down to roughly about where the bra strap sits. Okay. And we're going to tap there. And we're going to say this pain. This pain. And then we'll go to the head. And you can kind of make like, I don't know if you know those massage things that have like these different fingers. Oh my God, I love of, those things. <laughs> you can kind of make a hand like that and you can yeah. tap. There's many points on the top of the head. So I like to just kind of gently tap them all. <laughs> so you can tap the top of your head and just say this pain. This pain. And once we're done here. We're going to go back to the inside of the eyebrow and we're going to repeat. So we're going to start here again. Okay. And we're going to say this pain. This pain. And then out here, this pain. Can I switch sides? Absolutely. 
Okay. Yeah, your body knows what you need. <laughs> so you can you can do either side, you can switch it up, you can do both. Yeah, whatever works. And the bottom, just below your eye, this pain. Pain. Under the nose, this pain. This pain. And then the chin, this pain. This pain. And the collarbone spots again. And again, just thump them, rub them, massage them, whatever feels good. Listen to your body on what it tells you. And this pain. This pain. And then the, where the bra strap is again. This pain. This pain. And then we repeat one more time. We do three in total for this. Okay. So we go back to here, this pain. This pain. Outside the eye, this pain. This pain. Under the eye, this pain. This pain. Under the nose, this pain. This pain. And the chin, this pain. This pain. Collarbone, sore spots, this pain. This pain. And then back to where the bra strap sits it's under your armpit. This pain. This pain. And by the way, if you're listening to this on the podcast, this is also on YouTube if you want to actually watch and follow along. See what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we'll go up to the head and this pain. This pain. So after three rounds, we'll take a really deep breath in through the nose and out the mouth. And at this point, you can assess where you're at for whatever issue you were tapping on. So if you had foot pain, for example, and you tapped on foot pain, then you check in. It's really nice if before you start, you actually write down your number where you feel you're at from one to 10, because then you can look at what you wrote down because many times after you do the rounds you don't really remember what the pain level you started with was okay. so it's nice to write it down and just give yourself a number do the three rounds and then see where you're at and usually we would continue the tapping rounds until the pain goes down you know to a zero or the feeling or the emotion or whatever it is that you're challenged with goes down to a zero and this isn't the only tapping technique there's other things that you do as well that we can use when the emotions don't move or when the pain doesn't move, but this is a basic sort of short tapping recipe that really anyone can just try in the comfort of their own home. Okay. So I have to tell you, I was in a lot of pain. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm seven months pregnant and I've been in like some crazy pain on my ribs and like across my back for the last three months. And that, mm. that like definitely helped it like it lowered oh, wow. the amount of pain. So that that was really cool to see that happen in real time. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, yeah. I can't believe an hour has passed already. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, is just, is there anything else that you want people to know that we didn't cover yet today? Like, is there any other message that you want to get out there? I think it's just really important that you advocate for yourself. Uh, there's no one that will do it for you. And that's what happened to, in my journey as well as if I didn't go out and look for it myself, nothing would have changed really. Well, I, I would still be sticking lidocaine patches on my foot, I'm sure. So uh, it's so important to advocate for yourself and find the solution that works for you. Because from my experience, there are hundreds or even thousands of approaches out there and usually there will be one that will give you some relief or will even help you entirely with your pain. So just keep looking, keep researching, keep trying different things and really advocate for your own health. I think that's the most important thing I've learned. <laughs> Such an important message. It's it. You have to. Unfortunately, you have to. 
So thank you so much. Um, I'm sure, Petra, you're amazing. I'm so glad you came on the show. I knew this episode was going to be phenomenal. It, it totally was. And I'm sure everyone wants to know how they can get in touch with you, if they want to work with you, how they can find you. So if you wouldn't mind just letting listeners know all that. Yeah, absolutely. We've put everything actually in one place. So it's just bio.thejourney.com. And the journey is J O R N I. And everything that we offer is at that link. <laughs> so it's nice and simple. And you can check there for, for all the things that we offer. And um, I'm a little bit tied up still until the end of 2023 with finishing my dissertation. But as of January 2024, I'm hitting the ground running and we're going to offer some new programs and different coaching techniques and things that people can check out. So next year will be very, very exciting. Exciting things are coming to the journey. <laughs> awesome. And I'll have that link in the show notes too, in case anyone's driving, you can't write it down. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, thank you so much. This was such a pleasure. Uh, listeners, again, head over to the show notes for everything on Petra, for everything on me. You can find my book change your mind to change your reality on uh, Amazon, Google, Apple, an ebook, audiobook, paperback, and uh, lots of free resources on my website as well. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a beautiful rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Thank you.